Hello Keto. Welcome to Quito, Ecuador's stunning capital nestled high in the Andean foothills. Located at an elevation of 2,850 meters or 9,350 feet, Quito is known as the highest official capital city in the world and the closest capital city to the equator. In this video, we're taking you on an unforgettable journey through the best things to do in Quito in three days. Expect to explore the historic old town. We'll whisk you away to the middle of the world monument. Adventure seekers and nature lovers will be thrilled with excursions to the nearby Cotopaxi National Park and the cloud forests that surround the city. But that's not all. Quito's culinary scene is a delightful exploration of Ecuadorian flavors. So get ready to be captivated by the beauty of the world's first UNESCO World Heritage Site. These are the best things to do in Quito, Ecuador. We have come up to the lookout at El Penacillo, which offers incredible views of all of the volcanoes that surround the city of Quito. And you can see all the entire city of Quito from the old town to the modern new town. It's just an incredible view. Plus, there is a Virgin Mary up here that is massive. El Panacillo is a small 200 meter high hill that resembles a little loaf of bread. Thus, the name Little Bread. Standing at 3,016 meters or 9,900 feet above sea level, it offers amazing views of the Andes Mountains and the city of Quito. It is possible to walk up from the old town, but we recommend taking a taxi or go on a day tour with Metropolitan Touring. We saw the best of Quito in a short time with this local company that's been around for 70 years. Wow. We are walking through the lively Plaza San Francisco and it is just beautiful. Our room overlooks this plaza and at night it lights up to just an incredible view. From our hotel, we could walk directly onto San Francisco Square to enjoy all the action of vendors selling their wares and children chasing and feeding the resident pigeons. The star attraction on the square is the Convento y Museo de San Francisco. Open to the public, this convent offers a peaceful retreat from the busy city life. Tourists can expect to see beautifully preserved frescoes, classic colonial architecture, and tranquil courtyards. While we marveled at the intricate artwork of Miguel de Santiago, who was famous for his religious paintings, a man was playing the church's pipe organ to set the mood. known for its chocolate and one of the things you have to do when you're in Quito is come to Shea Teeth to see how the chocolatiers create their delicious chocolate here. The process that they go through here to make chocolate is a lot of work. Well this is amazing. We just watched the process of making the chocolate the right temperature, molding it, filling it, covering it, cooling it, and now we get to taste it, the best part. Wow, mmm, passion fruit and a dark chocolate, perfect combination. So behind me, people have come from the mountains with their goats to sell goat milk to the people in the city. It's very medicinal and good for you, so they come and they milk the goats and send you on your way with your fresh milk. Lunchtime, traditional Ecuadorian food for us at San Agustin Restaurante. Haladiria San Agustin is one of the most iconic restaurants in Quito and the oldest restaurant in the historic center dating back to 1858. Dining here is truly an event unto itself. It is a place to try some traditional Ecuadorian dishes such as ceviche and Quito's hearty Easter soup, Fanesca. 
but it's their ice cream that is truly the star attraction. When you come to Quito Coda San Augustine, it's so popular that you have to be let in and let out. So you know what that means, make a reservation. It was then onto the walking street Cal de la Ronda to explore more of this historic center. This pedestrian-only street is lined with wrought iron balconies, shops and cafes, and is a hub of activity day or night. We're going into the Jesuit church and there are no photos allowed inside, but I can already tell it's very ornate, so I'm just going to have to tell you all about it. The Jesuit church is one of the main tourist attractions in Quito. Inside, it is completely covered in gold leaf, and even though no photos are allowed, trust me, it's worth seeing. Even what you can see here from the entrance is very impressive. We are walking through Liberation Square, which is the main square in Quito here. You have the Presidential Palace behind me, you have the Quito Cathedral, and you have the Archbishop's Residence. Also known as Plaza Grande, this is a square you don't want to miss. If you happen to be in town on Monday, you can catch the changing of the guards at 11 a.m. There are also plenty of cafes and outdoor patios to grab a coffee, and it's a place to sit back and really take in the energy of Quito. Come up to the terrace at Casa Gangotina for sunset. It has a beautiful view of the city and you just may see the volcanoes. Cheers. So if you want to see a lot of volcanoes, there are 12 volcanoes surrounding Quito that you can see on a clear day. And we're getting a spectacular view of them all. So the volcano behind me, Cayembe, is the only volcano that has snow on it that is located along the equator. It's actually the only place on the equator at zero on the GPS that has snow. So it's a big place for climbers to put that on their bucket list and add it to their list of places to climb mountains. If you want to go even higher, the Teleferico is one of the highest gondolas in the world, taking you to 3,945 meters or about 12,000 feet. Once you get to the top, there are plenty of activities and photo opportunities, and you can even hike to the summit of Pachincha Volcano. So we're here at the entrance of the Cotopaxi National Park. It's at 3,200 meters. I grabbed myself some cocoa tea, which uh, helps with the altitude because we're heading up to 4,000 meters. So hopefully we get to see the volcano, fingers crossed. Cotopaxi National Park is the second largest national park in Ecuador. And Cotopaxi Volcano is the second highest peak in the country. This is one of the most popular day trips from Quito, where visitors can hike around Lake Limpio Pungo for views of the volcano. Now it's a very easy hike around it. It's all pretty flat. It's only 2.5 kilometers, but we are over 4,000 meters and we just drove up here. So you have to take it slow. You can really feel the altitude. Just me talking to you right now. Oh, I feel it just uh, adding some extra words. So I'm gonna go back to walking without talking. We didn't see the volcano on our trip, but here is what visitors can see most of the time. No trip to any city in South America would be complete without visiting at least one market. And the market of Sango Key was one of the stops on our Cotopaxi day trip, and it was a fun and lively experience. I just love going to the local markets because everybody is so welcoming and friendly. The minute you walk in, they're like wanting to pose for photos. It's a lot of fun. This is a really lively market. We stayed 
stayed at Casa Gangotina in the heart of the old city. This was part of an extension from our Galapagos cruise with HX Hertegruten Expeditions. Overlooking San Francisco Square, this was the perfect base to explore the UNESCO designated old city. The colonial building has been meticulously preserved with a quiet inner courtyard that creates a luxurious oasis in the heart of the city. We had a room overlooking San Francisco Square and we felt like royalty as we looked out at all the hustle and bustle. Casa Gangotina is one of the best places to dine in Quito using fresh local ingredients and combining them with contemporary culinary techniques. Each dish is truly a work of art and the chef prepares the perfect bite. They then describe how to best eat them and mix the infusion of taste together to create that perfect bite. Also make sure to order one of their signature cocktails that are inspired by the great festivals of Ecuador. There truly are an event. The cloud forest can easily be done on a day trip and makes for it the perfect day three of your Quito tour. Cloud forest tours are often combined with a stop at the equator. You can visit Mitat de Mundo or the Quitzado Solar Clock where you can stand on both the northern and southern hemispheres. I'm standing on the either side of the equator here in Ecuador. I'm in the north of the world, I'm in the south of the world, I'm in the north of the world, I'm in the south of the world, I'm in the north of the world, I'm in the south of the world. Now I'm just in the middle. This is one of the most popular tourist attractions in Ecuador and it was on the way to our cloud forest adventure at Mashpee Lodge. Instead of spending just a day in the cloud forest, we took a few days to explore the jungle and if you have the time, we highly recommend it. Coming to Mashpee is definitely an eco-adventure. Definitely, you can get out, do some hikes, do some trails, some great lookouts, and the lodge itself is beautiful. So there are a lot of activities here at Mashpee Lodge. We're heading up the observation deck right now. Oh, I see it's about 10 stories high. We are almost completely surrounded by clouds. We're way up above the cloud forest and it is living up to its name. Three days exploring Quito and its surrounding mountains and cloud forest is barely enough to see it all, but we managed to pack a lot in to see its cathedrals and even a museum or two. If you're planning a trip to the Galapagos Islands or the Amazon rainforest, make sure to spend a few days exploring the beautiful capital city of Ecuador to get a taste of life in the middle of the Andes. And these are the best things to do in Quito, Ecuador when you have a short amount of time. If you have other ideas, make sure to leave a comment below so we know what to do the next time we go back. If you enjoy our videos, make sure to subscribe and click on that bell for notifications because we put up new travel videos each week. See you next time!